I promise. They're really good. What, really do good. They're what, what, what are you thinking? I think there's going to be a... Um, okay, you're two out. Do you think... Uh, I think it's going to be a painful day. For you? You mean... A, yeah. Perhaps. Does that, does that mean a uh, big Republican sweep? I'm think? thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, let, uh, let's well, look let's at the see. polls and see what Despite the millions of dollars spent, new polls show the Senate may be slipping out of Democrats' hands. The gap is widening in states where they were trying to hold on and tightening in states that they were supposedly safely blue. Senator Gene Shaheen is clinging to a lead inside of the margin of error against Scott Brown in New Hampshire. Democratic Senator Kay Hagan of North Carolina up just one on Republican Tom Tillis. The same poll has Senator Pat Roberts catching up to independent Gleg Orman, but still trailing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Senator Mitch McConnell is expanding his lead and his chances to become majority leader. In Iowa, Republican Joni Ernst has opened her lead to seven. Democrat Bruce Braley is trending downward, even losing his home congressional district. Still, the balance of power may not be settled on Wednesday morning, because Senator Mary Landrieu, a Democrat, is leading in Louisiana's primary by eight points. But if she doesn't win outright, a head-to-head -head runoff shows her trailing Republican Congressman Bill Cassidy. And though Republican David Perdue is up four over Michelle Nunn in Georgia, that state is is likely headed to a runoff. In Georgia, runoffs last nine weeks, and Purdue is favored. So, Joe, why don't you tell us how this looks to you? I, you know, it, it looks like things are trending in the Republican direction. It still does not look like 1994, 2006, 2010. Oh, it's hard for a Republican sitting here to say this because people say you're just, no, you're exactly right, Donnie. Yeah. Barack Obama. <laughs> still believed in 2012 that if he won re-election, Republicans would suddenly say, oh, he's legitimized and we're going to work with him. No, it's going to take, I think, this final step if Republicans take over for him to go, okay, do I want to get things done or not? Yeah. And for Republicans to then have no more excuses, yes, they, they, they're either they, going to make Capitol Hill work or they're going to screw it up. And if they screw it up for two years, they will lose in 2016. Best thing for Republicans and Democrats exactly. is the Republicans take over. I think okay. it's the best thing for the country exactly. as far as accountability. Yes. Do you want to run Washington or do you want to run your mouth? Okay. And outgoing Senator Tom Harkin drew some fire for this comment about Ernst that surfaced over the weekend on BuzzFeed. In this Senate race, I've been watching some of these ads. And there's sort of this sense that, well, you know, I heard someone say, well, Joni Ernst, she's really attractive. And, she's, and she sounds nice. Well, I got to thinking about that. I don't care if he's as good looking as Taylor Swift <laughs> or as nice as Mr. Rogers. But if she votes like Michelle Bachman, she's wrong for the state of Iowa. Yeah, actually, uh, that's a good point. I'm going to say what you just said. Right. It's true. If a, if a Republican said that, it would be over. Carol Lee, um, co might that backfire? Uh, yeah, I think it, it actually might. I mean, if there's a, one thing that any politician, particularly a seasoned one like Harkin, should know, it's that you don't talk about women's looks in that way. Yeah. Uh, and I was I was in Iowa last week, and and the the Ernst campaign is very in tune to these kinds of things, and and are is very quick to jump on anything that even has remotely a whiff of sexism um, attached to it, and. Mm, we're going to end the block this way because we're going to be doing so much politics. It was a magic night for 19-year-old Lauren oh, Hill, a great. college yeah. freshman with an inoperable brain tumor whose dream was to play college hoops at Mount St. Joseph University in Cincinnati. Knowing Hill has just weeks to live, the NCAA moved up the date of her team's opening game to last night in hopes that she'd be healthy enough to play. Hill scored four points, making the team's first and last baskets in the victory. Here is Hill after the game. I just feel so blessed that this is all happening. I'm just really happy. This is a really good day. And <laughs> this just, it just makes me so happy. Beautiful. NCAA did good.